everyone, I'm Erica from the blog Buttered Side Up and today I'm going to take you on a full tour of my kitchen. Now in case you didn't know, we bought the majority of our kitchen cabinets off of Craigslist and actually bought our fridge and our dishwasher off of Craigslist as well. And I actually did a separate video on that already talking about the journey of transforming our kitchen from the Craigslist kitchen into our dream kitchen today. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that video in the iCards and you can watch that first to kind of get the backstory of how our kitchen came together. All right, let me take you on a tour of my kitchen. Okay, let's start with the island. For the countertops, we went with style stone statuario quartz and that's what we did for the island and for the rest of the kitchen. So we've had a couple of issues with our counters and I just wanted to talk about that. We've had issues with staining and chipping. So as you can see, or I don't know, maybe you can't see it, there is a sizable stain, like a rectangular stain right here on our counter. And it's from a cutting board sitting here wet on the counter. And I guess I just wasn't anticipating that I would have to be super careful with things that I set on the counter. So that's been a disappointment. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but there's just like a stain like all along here. A rectangular stain where a cutting board was. And then we also had problems with chipping. So as you can see, there's a chip out of the side of the counter here. And what happened was I went to load a glass cup and I was loading it into the dishwasher and I just kind of dinged it on my way into the dishwasher and I heard like a clink and I was like, oh no, I broke my cup. But then I saw the chip and it was white and I realized, okay, that wasn't the cup. That was the counter. I chipped my counter with a glass cup. So that was really disappointing. Ruben glued the chip back into the counter, but it's kind of obvious, kind of noticeable. And then, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but this is the veining that is the pattern in the countertop. But then right here, these are some stains from pans. And thankfully, it's really close to the color of the veining, but those aren't supposed to be there. And then there's also a stain right here. I don't know what this was from. Maybe it was from some kimchi or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's just that I heard that quartz was so durable and stain resistant, but I didn't realize it's stain resistant. It's not stain proof and that white quartz is the worst for staining. I guess I don't know if I would do things differently if I wouldn't get quartz again, but I just wish that I knew these things beforehand so that I could be more careful with my quartz countertops. And these cabinets were all off of Craigslist, and Ruben uh, put some X's on the side and on the front just to finish it off to make it look a little more polished. And we decided to go with a second sink in the island, and we just fell in love with the style of the Delta Broderick. I believe it's called the True Bar Faucet. I just like that kind of industrial look, and it's kind of cool. It works like a shower, so you start off, you turn it a little ways, and it's cold, and then you just keep turning, and then it's hot. Of course, the downside to that is you can't have just like a trickle of hot water. It has to be on full blast. And another downside to this faucet is that it doesn't have a pull-out spray function. And so instead of spraying crumbs down the drain, instead you have to take a rag and wipe them down, which is not a big deal to me. Overall, I really love the style of this faucet. So those couple of quibbles are not a big deal for me, but something to consider if you're going to get a faucet like this. We decided to go for fire clay sinks because I really like the look of a white sink and from what I read, fire clay sinks are fairly durable. And we also went ahead and got some wire racks to put in the bottom just so that we're not like banging pots on the bottom and dinging up the sinks. Okay, now let me show you what's inside of the island. This is just your typical under the sink cabinet. I just have some floor racks down here. And then the drain basket that is supposed to go in the island sink. The plumber just hasn't gone out to install that yet. And this is just one of those little pull-out faux drawers. And I just keep some extra stainless steel scrubbers and things like that in there. And then in these cupboards, I keep kind of like our glass storage. So I have some disposable plates and cups and cutlery and I have an extra drying mat right there, and then some baking pans, my glass storage containers, and that box up there is some long matches, and those are just little um, jars that I kept from yogurt containers. And I have a larger measuring cup down there and a glass water pitcher. Okay, so in this drawer, 
I just keep some of my most used spices. And as you can see, I have it gorgeously organized. These ones are just little wet jars that I put spices in. And then I have some brown paper labels, which, uh, yeah, I really need to redo these. They're getting kind of cruddy. These are just my most used spices. I have a few more spices in a box that I use like more seasonally, but I have cinnamon, which I actually have a bigger one of this Vietnamese cinnamon, which is very flavorful. Um, cardamom seeds, sage, oregano, cloves, basil, ginger, some more cardamom, nutmeg, rosemary, thyme, parsley, ginger, chili powder, dill weed, sesame seeds. This is the Trader Joe's multi-purpose umami seasoning blend, which this is actually more salty than I was expecting and a little bit spicy. Onion powder, garlic powder, another thing of onion powder because this one's almost gone. Cumin, Italian seasoning, Vietnamese cinnamon, and then I have uh, a little bit of cinnamon sugar right here. Curry powder, paprika, and cayenne. And here's another gorgeously organized drawer. This is where I just keep like wax paper, cling wrap, parchment paper, some paper bags, and some flower seeds, magic erasers. Just This is kind of like a random drawer. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the kitchen. I'll just start on one end and we'll go around and I'll explain everything. So on this end, we have the warming drawer and this was actually another thing that came with the Craigslist kitchen. And before I had a warming drawer, I didn't think I needed a warming drawer, but now I know I need a warming drawer. We've actually used it a lot more than I thought we would. I've used it for proofing bread, I've used it for softening butter, and of course just keeping food warm. And this is a wool warming drawer. It feels like pretty good quality. I have no idea how long it will last, but so far I'm loving it. Okay, let's move on to below the warming drawer. I love these slide out drawers and I can actually fit all of my stainless steel pots here. Plus a little copper pot. So that's nice that I can fit all of my pots in this drawer. And then the bottom I just have the lids and I find that this keeps things pretty well organized. And then I keep my knife block right next to the stove. And then I just have like some avocado oil and a few things on the shelf and that's my salt cellar. And then I just styled some like my prettiest cookbooks on the second shelf. Now on the top shelves, I haven't put anything because um, I don't really know what to put up there. I'm not super good with styling it. So one day, eventually I'll have something up there. And then we have my Pride and Joy, my Verona range. It's the dual fuel electric oven gas cooktop. So far, I love it. There are a few things that I'll go over that I would want differently in a perfect world, but overall, I really love it. So one thing I would change is the depth of the oven. It's a little shorter than I'm used to, and some of my pans just barely fit in there. So far, it hasn't been a huge issue though. I will say though that it's difficult to fit a Papa Murphy's pizza inside of there. Also, the high is very high on this stove, and what you can do is you just go the other way with the knob, and then you can get the flame to be really low. Another thing that was a little bit different to get used to is the control knobs for the oven temperature. So it's not super precise. There's not like a bunch of little markings. You just kind of have to guess at where, you know, like 325 is or 425, which I haven't found an issue with that. Most ovens vary with their temperature anyway, but that's just something to consider. We decided to also go with the matching Broderick pot filler. And this was another thing where I didn't know that I would need it, but now that I have it, I definitely need it. It's definitely an extra, but it is actually really handy, and I love the look of it too. So over here, I kind of keep my utensil crocs, and for now, I have my KitchenAid here. Eventually, I'm going to move my KitchenAid into the pantry, but as you see, that's not finished yet. That's not ready for appliances. And then I set up a little matcha station here, and I have like my matcha whisk and some of my matcha powders, and my milk frother, my mugs, and then I have some tea up here. And then over here, I have our most used dishes. Plates, bowls, cups, dinner plates, 
and then some overflow and some soup bowls up here. And honestly, I feel like this area looks a little busy. I'm not exactly sure how to style it, but we'll get there one day. And then down here, we have our corner cabinet. And this was one that we had to purchase new because it didn't come with a kitchen. The Craigslist kitchen didn't have a corner cabinet. And something that I really wanted were these built-in Lazy Susans. I grew up with these and I knew how handy they were and so this was something that I really wanted to get in our new kitchen. So in this top Lazy Susan I have some sushi rice, some dates and prunes, some cocoa powder, salt, cornstarch, kochugaru, which is Korean red pepper flakes, some banana flour, baking powder, some more rice, this is just long grain white rice. And then some starches, potato starch, corn starch, tapioca flour, and then some baking soda, cream of tartar, which I make my own baking powder often. And then some sugar, some pectin for making jam, more sugar. Um, I believe this is sucanat. It's either sucanat or coconut sugar. It's some organic brown sugar organic powdered sugar, more powdered sugar there. And this is like some of my homemade vanilla jars, which I need to get some more vodka so I can get those brewing again. And then I have some almond extract and then some vanilla extract. And these are just some random fruit snacks. And then some whole peppercorns and some coarse Himalayan pink salt. And then a little bit of olive oil. This is some lemon olive oil. Um, this was sent to me by Pomora. And some gelatin. And then in this bottom Lazy Susan, right here I have some napkins and like a bib for the kids for Anya. And then I have some glass mixing bowls, a colander, and then some stainless steel mixing bowls, and that's what I keep in here. All right, so in this drawer right next to the Lazy Susan, this cabinet was another one that we had to add. But this is just where I keep my hot pads and some hand towels and then some extra sponges and my thermometer. One of these days I'm either gonna make or buy some new hot pads because these are kind of on their last leg. And then in this cupboard, I decided, since this was a new cabinet, I decided to have them put in dividers. So this is where I keep my cutting boards, my drying racks, and some baking pans. And this is probably one of my favorite cabinets in the kitchen. It's just so handy to have those dividers. It keeps things organized really well. I'm really glad I went for that. And it was actually one of the cheaper custom cabinets that you could get. And then in this drawer, I just store all the lids to my glass containers and stuff like that. I haven't found a way to keep these completely organized, so right now they're just a jumble. And then in this drawer, we have trash and recycle bins. This pull-out drawer came with the kitchen, and this is another one of my favorite features. It's just really handy to have that trash can accessible right there, and then you can just like sweep food into it or you can just pull it open and have it at the ready so that like when you crack an egg it'll be right there and you can just throw the egg right in but then you can just shut it and it's out of sight and then over here we have our main kitchen sink and for this faucet we went with the delta broderick bridge faucet and it also has the pull down head and i have to say that i'm in love with this faucet now when we got it it was kind of embarrassing i turned it on and I turned on what I thought was the fan function and it was just like a bubble and I thought, oh no, we got a defective faucet. And so I was on the phone with the company and telling them how it was a manufacturer defect and then I sent her a picture and she was like, that's what it's supposed to do. So it's actually their spray shield technology and there's just like this really skinny stream but it's very powerful and I actually find that it's really handy and that the spray shield actually does keep it from splattering all over your shirt. And with a sink this big, I think that it is nice to have a pull-out spray faucet just so that you don't have to be wiping out the bottom of the sink all the time. And we went for another fireplace sink here and so far it's holding up pretty well. 
We thought maybe we put a, a little bit of a ding in it, but so far it doesn't seem to be really wimpy. And we also decided to go for a quartz windowsill, and I'm really glad we went with that too because I really like the look. And then for the cupboards down here, it's just boring, unorganized, under sink stuff. That's my grease can, just in case you're wondering. I don't store my yogurt underneath my sink. And then for this drawer right next to the sink, this is kind of where our silverware is. Eventually I'd like to have built-in dividers, but until then I just throw all the main silverware here and then I have like the kids silverware here. These measuring spoons are supposed to go in this bin. And then I have chopsticks and Korean spoons here and straws are supposed to go here and then just miscellaneous here. And then the next drawer down, I just have some more tea towels. And then the next drawer, this is another just kind of miscellaneous drawer. I have some lids and then some clothespins and other clippies to like keep bags closed. Toothpicks, pastry cutter, an ulu knife, some various tools here, and then some twist ties, some toothpicks, and just other odd random things. Kind of the junk drawer. And then this bottom drawer is where I keep all of like the kids plates and cups and bowls. These are just the ones that are not breakable and I let Anya play in this drawer since it's safe for her to play with since there's nothing that could like break and cut her. And there's also some stainless steel storage containers and other odd random things. This is the dishwasher that came with the Craigslist kitchen. Um, it's Asco, which I'm not real familiar with that brand, but it seems like a pretty nice dishwasher. And then above the dishwasher, I keep my drying pad, which eventually I might get like a dish drying rack, but so far I'm enjoying this pretty well. And then on the open shelving up here, I just kind of have like a little coffee station, have some mugs, some vanilla syrup, a French press, and then up there I have my AeroPress, a Bialetti mocha pot, and then some more coffee mugs. And then over here we have our fridge. Just kidding. I'm not going to show you there. It's really messy. <laughs> now, like I said, this fridge came with the kitchen and it came with the panel that makes it look built in. Now, when we bought it, it was actually flush with this cabinet and so they must have built this cabinet out and we didn't know that until we installed it. So that's why it's bumped out a little bit instead of flush. Okay, so here's what's in the skinny cabinet that's just next to the fridge. On the bottom shelf, I keep the kids' toothbrushes and then some dishwasher detergent and some rinse aid. In the next shelf up, I have some like chocolate bars and some cocoa powder, things like that. Next cupboard, I have some supplements and I have another basket back behind there of more supplements. In this part, I have my coffee beans, ground coffee, just some extra like coffee and tea, some mugs back there. And then I have some superfoods up in here, some mushrooms, things like that. And then I have some dishwasher pods, Reuben's malted milk, some collagen peptides. And then in this cupboard, I have some wine and some emergency. And then in the cupboard above the fridge, we have some cereal, protein bars, some baking supplies, cake stands, various things like that. Now to the right of the fridge, we have our pantry and we put in sliding barn doors and this pantry definitely isn't done yet. And so we'll do a tour of that once it's finished. As you can see, I just have a bunch of appliances on the floor and then we have some food up here. Not super organized and eventually we're going to put cabinets in the lower part here and then also we'll have a countertop and we have all these outlets because this is where I'm going to be storing a lot of my small appliances. Alright well I hope you had fun looking around my new kitchen. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.